like we always do at this time. What up, y'all? It's your boy Costa Don. Sit here just looking and chilling. Hope y'all can hear me good. But you know. Yeah now. Yeah now. Yeah now. Trying to get into this King Von, the deadly duo. As y'all know, Dirk called King Von his brother. King Von called Dirk his brother, his bro. And I want y'all to peep how many times before they caught the case with Hellabaz and Bezu, which Bezu was never charged. Y'all, y'all never peeped that? Even when the case took place, right? They said that Bezu was locked up in a federal facility. He wasn't with the guys. He still never was charged with anything. But look. The month after the shooting at Dooski's funeral, which critically injured Wooski, King Von seemed to be worried about his reputation, tweeting that the past is always coming back to haunt him, and saying that he's not a murderer, not a rapper, not a scammer, just handsome. But also tweeting that if you play with him on the internet, he's going to your house. Perhaps behind the scenes, Von was beginning to struggle to manage his reputation. Now he was becoming a legitimate rapper in the music industry, he might have been worried about his past as a killer getting in the way of his new plans. Von said that he was having nightmares during this time, and that he was popping pills to cope. There'd be a few interesting exchanges around this time too, like a Twitter conversation between Von and his baby mama, where Von joked that he would put her on the news, and then backtracking, having to deny being a killer. At this point, Von was clearly concerned about his reputation, and was on edge to even joke about being a killer. But one person who wasn't worried about Von's reputation was Lil Durk, who was doing everything he could to put King Von on during this time. In mid-November 2018, Lil Durk previews King Von's upcoming song, Crazy Story, on his Instagram. Fans knew that something huge was coming. Lil Durk was taking Von to parties to rub shoulders with other huge rappers in the industry, like YNW Melly and Roddy Rich, even taking an enthusiastic King Von to the studio to hang out with Gunna. Hey, Durk, yo, Gunna, Shalom. Okay, Superman. Dirk would even bring King Von along to his interviews, with Lil Dirk's November 2018 visit to The Breakfast Club being one of the first times that the mainstream music listening public got a glimpse of King Von, and this would end up being a legendary appearance. Clearly doing all he could to put the spotlight on his friend and artist, Dirk had brought Von onto one of the most famous rap interview shows in the world. What's your artist name, bro? King Von. What's up, sir? So John, welcome, welcome, welcome. Dirk would tell Charlemagne that he wanted to sign Von because of the backstory behind him, with Charlemagne not being quite prepared for the realness when Von started talking about beating his murder charge. What made you want to sign King Von? Cause he got a whole story behind him. Wait, what's the story? What's your story? My story. I just got to jail for beat a body in two attempts. Like so you was in, you was in jail for two murders. Yeah, one murder and two attempts. I just beat. How you beat that? I mean, you didn't do it. Cool. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, like, you know, jury. Yeah, look, you know. In the interview, you could visibly see how you beat that. Did it ever happen? Lil Dirk trying to look out for Von and covering his tracks after Charlemagne began asking Von if he actually did the murder. With Dirk butting in, saying that Von beat it because he didn't do it. You gonna yeah, beat it? You so gonna be, you gonna beat it if you didn't do it? That's all. Von would go on to say that he can't get a normal job in Chicago because he's done so much dirt in the streets that if he was seen working. So was Dirk trying to discredit him? Dirk said he ain't commit nobodies. Who y'all believe? Vaughn or Dirk? I don't answer the question. I know who you believe. The normal job, he would probably be killed on sight. It's like, no I can't work no job in Chicago, you see what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Why, Why not? Why couldn't you work a job in Chicago? I got a, a face card. Like, I can't. Oh, I got you. People like, know you. Say if I'm behind the counter, make down somebody coming out here, do some crazy. You know? Yeah. Then at the end of the interview, as Von was explaining to Charlemagne that he had no plans after jail because he's got no experience doing anything, suddenly Dirk begins to cough, seemingly giving Von an indication not to say anything incriminating about his former life as a killer. What What other plans did you have other than rap? I ain't had no plan. That's the thing. Like you get out, it's you got a lot of shit on your mouth, so you getting that. What to do? What to do? What to do? It's like. Back to the streets. Mm-hmm. Have you no experience is doing nothing. I ain't, you know? <laughs> Word. This interview was also the perfect opportunity for Von to promote his upcoming hit song, Crazy Story. Crazy Story dropped like sometime this week coming up. Remember, oh, sometime damn. like any day. Von would go on to tease the music video for Crazy Story, telling fans that he has a movie coming. And he would even surprise himself with the amount of comments that he got on the post about the song. Von would go on to release the audio for Crazy Story on December the 6th, 2018, just one day before the one year anniversary of him beating his murder case. Von would claim around this time to be making chess moves in the hopes that he would win at life. 
and his next move would indeed be a big one. With the full-blown music video for Crazy Story dropping on Worldstar on the 11th of December, Von himself would be amazed at racking up a whopping 110,000 views in his first day. But the appeal of Crazy Story was undeniable. It was a storytelling type song where Von would use his lyrics to tell an entire narrative, telling the story of himself plotting an armed robbery on a rich drug dealer and using a woman to set them up. But the robbery would go wrong when Von's ops caught him lacking, with the track ending in a shootout, and the entire story playing out in the cinematic music video for the song, with Von playing the main character and narrator. Von would end the song dropping his iconic final line where he introduced the world to his regular catchphrase, rapping from 64th and from 65th, we not from 63rd. Shouting out Oblock on 64th and 65th King Drive, and dissing his ops from 63rd and St. Lawrence and Eberhard Avenues, aka Tukerville. Dissing 63rd would become a massive part of Von's brand, and he would even later be seen selling merch showing the street sign for 63rd with a big cross over it. And the popularity of the song Crazy Story had Von's fans all over the world dissing 63rd without really even knowing what it means. Right. Crazy Story was distributed by Lil Durk's OTF label and racked up a whopping 3 million views in a week. This is a huge hit, and today it sits over 69 million views on YouTube. Von was on a high after dropping Crazy Story. The week after the release, he would tweet a picture with the caption saying that people see you shining and forget that you're dangerous. And from here, he would make numerous tweets suggesting that the money was finally rolling in. At the end of December 2018, Dirk would hop on an Instagram Live with Von with a big stack of money celebrating the success of their release. Oh, what's that? I got a drop on a flex. He from Tennessee. What that is, confetti in your head? Plan, boy. Never, don't throw that. Hey, don't th you gonna break some of that? Up. Don't throw that, bro. Then in the new year, King Von would begin performing his hit song at live shows, even reacting on Twitter to his new song playing on the radio, suggesting that some people might have been shocked when they heard him coming out of their car stereo. Von felt like he had truly made it at this point, tweeting that even his mother was finally proud of him and saying that he felt truly blessed for the position that he had reached in life. But some people in Chicago were surprised. Now King Von was being played on the radio, doing interviews with The Breakfast Club, and becoming a household name, some people who knew him in Chicago for being a ruthless shooter were giving the side eye. There was actually a really interesting Reddit thread, asking people who knew of Von before 2017 to share what they thought when they saw him getting success in the music industry. Some said that they thought when he first started rapping he wouldn't get anywhere, but then when he kept progressing, it seemed like his life was a real movie. Whilst another person would say, 100% I could not believe it. When Dirk took him on Breakfast Club, it was so surreal, and he almost admitted to murder on there too, but still, I never thought he would blow up. Then Crazy Story came out and started picking up steam, and it was like, dear god, this literal gang assassin is being played at NFL stadiums. Off the back of the success of Crazy Story, King Von would begin going even harder in his music, with his next track getting even more disrespectful to the Ops. On January the 9th, 2019, Mimo 600 and King Von would drop their new track, Exposing Me, and in the song, Von mentions Wooski getting shot in the head. He says that he's put in so much work in the street that get. Get Back Gang will now look out for him. He says outright that he was a killer before the rap, and saying, I swear I killed her, broke her back, a possible reference to KI's murder, he would say that he's smoking Tuka and Lil Mark, and Von even shouts out an old friend from Oblock, DQ, as his shooter, suggesting that he will call a hit and have DQ shoot someone for him. It seemed like the more violent and real Von's music got, the more fans flocked to him. But since the success of his crazy story, and being- Why he the only one keep on carrying out that Von was this killer? Like, every time I turn around, he want to make sure everybody believed that King Von was this big, bad killer. How long he been plotting his documentary? Grew under the wing of successful Chicago drill rap legend Lil Durk, Von was spending a lot of time away from the mean streets of Chicago that he had rapped about, instead beginning to get used to living the high life of a successful rapper like Durk. Rather than jumping in stolen cars and doing drills, Von was seen with Dirk jumping off of luxury yachts, seemingly surrounded by people who knew his reputation well. Okay, okay, Dirk, yo, it's on you now. This Dirk scared. This scared. Okay, 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 Von. This scared. Look at Von. Look at Von. He too scared. They talking about Von. He scared to jump. They out here talking about you. All that savage. You scared to jump in the water. But all of the success Von was seeing didn't seem to change who he really was underneath. It's and Von jumped in the fucking water. So I was, 
Yo, stop, man. He did jump in the water. I've seen another video where him jump right in the water. It seemed like Dirk was doing his best to take a killer out of a dangerous environment and turn him into a good person and rapper. But perhaps Lil Dirk didn't realize that he was also inviting that killer energy into his legitimate rap career. Because on February the 5th, 2019, around 5.49 a.m., Lil Durk and King Von were allegedly outside Atlanta restaurant, The Varsity. Here, an altercation would take place in the parking lot where allegedly Lil Durk and King Von, along with fellow OTF affiliate THF Bezu and another Chicago native named Hella Bands, would allegedly shoot and rob a man by the name of Alexander Witherspoon, allegedly targeting him for $30,000 cash that he had on him at the time. Detectives would later claim that a video showed Lil Durk shooting out of his own personal car, a custom Jeep Trackhawk with a camouflage wrap and a large 300 on the sign that he was known to own. Durk had even posted clips of this car to Twitter with the caption, Spin Spin, clips which even Von himself had reposted. Cops would be seen analyzing the scene after the shooting, and the local news would report on the shooting before even becoming aware of these famous rappers' involvement. Police found several shell casings in this parking lot. The varsity was closed at the time this happened, around 5.45 this morning, but this club across Spring Street was open, and one patron who was parked in the varsity lot to go to that club told me what he went through. The man from Chicago, who goes by Gutta, returned to the varsity parking lot this afternoon to change the tire and assess the damage on his cousin's car after it was hit by bullets. Tired, exhausted, wild night. I'm just happy I'm alive, basically. So that's really what my main focus is. He had just paid the cover to get into one cigar lounge across Spring Street when he heard the shots outside around 5.45 a.m. He says people hit the floor and he hid in a bathroom. Police say a 23-year-old man was in serious condition when he was rushed to the hospital after the shooting. They are now looking for a dark-colored SUV. They are doing anything they can to help Atlanta police. The afternoon after the shooting, Vaughn would post up on Twitter with a handful of cash and a gun on the couch next to him. Later on, posting a tweet saying you never know who's going to snitch when the cops come. Then, the day after the shooting, Vaughn would tweet asking if you can be a killer and a good person too. A few days later, on February the 9th, 2019, Von would be seen in the background on an Instagram Live with Asian Doll, with Von talking to his friend on the phone, possibly about this very shooting. He would seemingly be telling his friend that he thinks he made all of the wrong moves and saying that the cops are now watching him. Now you know I ain't trying to do none of this. Oh, dude, that's so fluky. We just did the Now, you man tell you the most eeriest part about this video that nobody never pointed out. This man was talking about all this crime shit in front of Asian Doll. Okay. All this shit. That is Asian dogs in there, right? Wrong the first time I tell you, I get together. It was fool. He just feel like you made all the wrong moves, the, you know, on mistake. We just was tweaking on for that shit, you know. We just got to be tighter last time for them. <laughs> now, you understand? See that look? See, that's the part I was saying, like. Everybody be tweaking with me on, oh, you know, Jason, them all of my head tweaking me, telling about this, that, and that. But I ain't letting you know that. I'm just letting them tweak with me and trying to make sure everything decent. All the time, you don't be seeing all that part, man. Man, I'm all with the man about putting on them, all about the man for sure, I'm all about the man for 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 See, now they talking about the something that happened at the varsity, allegedly. She going to say, oh, I don't know what they're talking about. Yes, you do. Just like just like when she was down there in the Gold Coast shop and the feds was raiding O Block. Yeah, I know that I'm, oh, I look out, oh, I'm swinging in the truck with us on the phone when I get out like that. Well, you know, I'm half and about it. But clearly, Von wasn't too worried about the cops watching because he would tweet on February the 21st that he was ready to catch another body. And the day after, Von jumps on a reckless IG live with fans, showing off all the money he had apparently made from features, dissing Tuka, and saying that he's not a rapper, just a gangster who raps for the money. I just featured my, you know, I'll just pick this up for folks. What you about to drink some, smoke some? The smoke Tuka. You know who Tuka is? No, what is that? That's him. He been dead for a long time. How the f you don't know Tuka? Man, I'm not a rapper, man. I'm a gangster. I done rap. 
While cops were slowly piecing together the facts about the shooting, Von was continuing with his rap career, without sparing a thought to how much self-incrimination he was doing to himself at the time. On February the 28th, Von drops a feature on Dari's song, Gang Only, where he raps, he has a lot of bodies. Even saying that on his first murder, the victim thought it was a robbery. Around a week later, on March the 5th, 2019, King Von's song, Wait, unofficially leaks. That track has some brazen lyrics, where he says that he has more bodies than the killer from Scream as well as admitting that he shot up Dunbar School with L.A. Capone, something he had tweeted about prior. He would also say that he remembers his first murder and saying that he missed a bunch of shots, but now his aim is better. And while these demonic tracks are circulating online, King Von and Lil Durk are having a great time flexing- If these tracks are demonic, and he's sitting up here praising Durk, I said, well, Durk this and Durk that. Nigga, he was, on, he was on Durk record label at the time when all these demonic songs was coming out. So what that makes Dirk, stop trying to pin roses on Dirk. Oh, Dirk was trying to change his life. And King Vaughn was the one he brought into his world who was a demon. Man, shut up. They both demons if that's the case. Being on Instagram Live and fighting over who has the most money and designer clothing. <laughs> hey, you saw me flexing early. No, nah, man, I was, I was too big. Nickname Popeye. Popeye, no spinning. Yeah. Come up. Hold on. I was too big for you. No. Uh, so, what? I, I just what? know. I, what? I, I, don't play, I just married myself to death. You flash. That's a matter though. You over there with Tony, y'all. Huh? You over there with 20 bucks. Don't try to count my money. Don't count my pockets on phone numbers. Hey, what you on though? Damn. You do it too much. Don't be the ass in them things. And Dirk pointed out that those is all 20s. It seemed like they was always in competition, just like Dirk jumped in the water, Vaughn had to jump in the water, Dirk got a chain, Vaughn had to get a bigger chain. Like, what was the competition? Did Dirk get tired of the competition and knocked out the competition? Because if he the voice, that means he was the threat, right? Okay. That's a couple belts. Hey, I'm saying. Fat, fat, big, your piece. You still flexing? And Later on in this live, Von would joke to Lil Durk, saying that he was smoking on Lil Mark and Tuka. I'm right here kicking on Lil Mark. Dirty ass. Yeah. Dang. Marky. That shit be so much ass today, man. I, I never like sleep in the studio. Lil Mark. Tuka, nigga, I'm the f one on. I don't know about this. But at this point, King Von was playing huge concerts to massive crowds and selling verses to other rappers all over the country and making headlines in major rap publications. King Von would tweet around this time that he was scared to go back to jail and hoping that he wasn't making the wrong decisions and suggesting that he was worried that if he did go back to jail, all his new friends would leave him behind. But no matter how far Von got into the rap industry, he just couldn't stop toting guns and thugging. At the end of March, Von was seen riding around with Lil Durk toting a big strap for any ops that might pull up, even joking about having more bodies than anyone in the car and saying that he's about to get indicted and go to jail for a long time. Up and down we go. Cut this load back up, man. He get excited in his. Wait. Is it over? No, you know I'm coming out. Look. <laughs> <laughs> After this, Dirk had whoever was behind the wheel driving incredibly fast in that Jeep Trackhawk, with Von seemingly in fear of his life and joking that his gun is about to go off. Oh, music. 
go work. Hey, cause that motherfucker been scared as hell. Doing three hundred of them motherfuckers. I see, you. I'm sweating. <laughs> your life plan for your life. Hey, jump to my. Hey, jump to y'all. Scream. Cause I shut the up. Do I have my seat on? Hey. Back seat on my. Damn, my seat on. Hey, it's a. It's a. It's a. Seat belt in this. Work. Chop to our central crib, baby. Yeah, that's what. Chop to get this young ass on. You're gonna be fucking cool. See Dirk call him bro, right? So when he was saying that, that song, bro this, bro that, he's to my vine, y'all. I wouldn't chase me in there. <laughs> now you're back talking against you. You just screaming like a little. <laughs> Just read. He texts you talking, look, bro. How does that read the motherfucker? We have that. Big time. Dirk and Von were clearly living the fast life at this point, and seemingly having faced no consequences so far for the shooting at the Varsity nearly two months before. However, rumors would continue to swirl about their involvement in serious crimes. On the 31st of March 2019, King Von is seen hanging out with Savannah rapper Quando Rondo, who is signed to Baton Rouge rapper NBA YoungBoy with Quando appearing in a clip on King Von's Instagram where he would diss Von's ops on 63rd. I'm saying though, they got 63rd, dirty ass, man. It seems that back then, Von and Quando Rondo's camps were pretty cool with each other. That very same night that he was with Quando, Von is seen hanging out and hitting the stage with Lil Durk. Von would tweet a picture with Dirk, along with a caption, saying they've got to stay focused because their enemies envy them. The same day these pictures were taken, an altercation would take place at the Hidden Village Apartments Complex in Atlanta. Ciao. A man named Tyrick Livat was shot dead, with the news reporting a total of five people shot, the result of a huge shootout. Now, who paid his family to shut the hell up? His cousin, and I don't know if it's this same guy. I'm going to show you him in a second. They hit me up and was like, man, that's not true, bro. Dom Vaughn ain't had nothing to do with that. Man, I know people that was out there. I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to name Buka. I'm not going to name Bezu. I'm not going to name Nemo. I'm not going to name these people. If y'all don't believe that, that they be hanging out in little dirty ass spots like that, go look at motherfucking Nemo when he down in the, in the complex where Quando Rondo allegedly grew up at. If this not the complex with Quando Rondo allegedly grew up with, they probably was out here with Quando Rondo the night that this happened. But this was in Atlanta. I ain't gonna say he was he grew up there because we know he's from Savannah, but he hung here. Probably I'm just just me speculating, but they hung out down here in Georgia in different places, man, for sure. Apparently, a large fight had broken out between two large groups, and an hour after the fight, one group who had left and returned got into it again and begun shooting, with five people being hit in the altercation and Tyreek unfortunately losing his life, being found dead by police in the parking lot around 10.30pm. The police would say that the shooter goes by a nickname, but refuse to disclose it to the press, with reports on this incident making it to the TV news the following day. Now to a developing story, a shooting leaves one person dead, four others injured. This happened at an apartment complex in southwest Atlanta. Natasha Givens is live outside of Grady Memorial Hospital. Oh, yeah, no, Natasha, what are we learning about their conditions this morning? Well, Christy, police tell us this all started at a house party last night on Lantern Drive. They tell us a fight broke out between two large groups, and it's some Grady again. Same hospital Vaughn passed away at. Same hospital the, the the officer that was at the airport was taken to. Hmm. At some point, a man opened fire, hitting five people. Let's take a look at some of that video from last night. Two of them ran and went to the gas station. They was the ones at the gas station screaming King Vaughn name. They said King Vaughn them did it. So Chicago dudes. Police tell us one man was found dead at the party while four others were rushed here to Grady. We're told that the victims' ages range from 17 to 20 and the victims are all male. Investigators are trying to determine a motive and what happened leading up to that shooting. After this, a rumor would circulate suggesting that King Von and THF Bezu had something to do with the shooting. However, Lil Dirk would tweet, never, just a couple of hours after the body was discovered, followed by tweeting, protect the money at all costs the morning after. Von would tweet the following morning, 
that you can do everything right and they're still going to find a way to bring you down, dissing somebody that he doesn't name. Meanwhile, another member of their entourage, Mimo600, would tweet the day after, saying that people will end up on the news. For the record, there's never been any concrete evidence to indicate that Von, Dirk, Bezu, or any of their entourage had anything to do with this They know that, that that happened on April Fool's Day, on April 1st. He said, April Fool's, you'll end up on the news. No, on April 1st, everybody be like, April Fool's, April Fool's. and Tyreek Livert's cousin would actually do a YouTube interview saying that he also doesn't believe that Von had anything to do with the killing either. <laughs> yeah. said King Von kills your cousin. I'm not sure if this the dude that hit me up and then Levant mother hit me up. It was his mother, she said. If it wasn't, I don't know, but the lady said she was his mother and was like, you don't know what you're talking about. This is not true. Okay. That's what they saying. I don't believe it. But honestly, I think they be just attaching King Von name. It. I don't see it. I don't see it, you know. You could be with Dirk with all these fancy and, you know what I'm saying, then you over there, like. Yeah, he was over there, and they paid you to say what you're saying, bro. You know what I'm saying? Then it don't add up. It's highly likely that this incident had nothing. How they trying to, trying to change the narrative is the only thing I see that don't add up. All other stuff added up to me. They saying that they was there to do with Von and Dirk, but that didn't stop people all over the internet making King Von body count articles and videos speculating as to whether King Von was responsible for this murder too. None of this proves Von was involved, but what it does prove is that even if he wasn't involved, his reputation as a shooter would have the fans and public pointing the finger at him regularly. But as the weeks went by, Von would continue to go about his life whilst the cops would continue building the case related to the original shooting at the Varsity. On April the 1st, the victim in the Varsity shooting, Alexander Weatherspoon, would end up being booked into a Chicago jail. How real is this? All this stuff kept happening on April 1st. April 1st. Why? But they could hang at the Varsity, but they couldn't hang at that party out here in Valley. Okay on unrelated charges of possession of a stolen vehicle. It seemed like the police were slowly getting closer to having something concrete, but King Von just didn't seem worried about attracting the attention of the authorities. In a social media clip uploaded on April the 2nd, 2019, King Von recorded himself singing in the back of a car with Lil Durk, dissing dead people like Dooski, and saying that they almost killed Wooski. Here we go again, here we go again. And notice they still in the same track hawk. The same car they probably used to get away. That same track hawk they in again. Back on the road again. Back on the road again. Right down. Make me don't even want to drill no more. Hmm. Avenue, right down the avenue. We catch you and you through. We catch you and you do. I don't wanna talk to you. I don't wanna talk to you. I don't really shoot. I don't really with you. Is I'm shooting right, ain't wrong. Is I'm shooting light, I'm shooting strong. Die, why? Yeah, the love. Z go. T3. Dooski. Uh, Wolski almost. Uh, fat head. Uh, uh. Also in April, he would tweet. All those people passed away. Even Fat Head. Y'all wonder why Fat Head cousin was dissing King Von, right? Hold up. Remember when this little girl, Avina, what's her name? I think her name was Avina. When she dissed King Von. This Fat Head cousin, y'all. Remember she went and stood over Von Grave? Fat haired cousin. And he named him in the car, along with the other people. And then when it got to Wooski, who is still alive, he said, almost. Wake up and smell the coffee, man. It's real in the field. Saying he's so real he might kill, and posting throwback pictures of him and T. Roy back when they were hitters in Chicago. He'd even post a picture of himself with a gun in his waistband and a caption saying his enemies envy him, as well as tweeting about can't get right being killed in the parking lot. Von would tweet saying that he's never the victim, always the suspect. And this is all while police are still looking for a suspect in the varsity shooting. On the 10th of April, the day before the anniversary of K.I.'s murder, King Von would tweet a cryptic message asking if the streets could be his valentine, saying that they're tired of dying. Then one day after the anniversary of K.I.'s death, King Von would make a biblical tweet, saying, God said to me out of his own mouth to cut her off, grandson, 
and grandson said, in Jesus' name, amen. Von would even tweet reminding people that even though they see him having fun on Twitter, be careful, because he's still dangerous in real life. He would say that he'll do something to somebody if they go against him, and Von would also release a clip apparently promoting Lil Durk's new cereal, Durky Oats, telling people to go and buy the cereal whilst waving the clip of a gun. Von would also later tell a woman that he comes with the cereal. If you ain't order no Durky Oats, that you will Hey, stop playing my mother, Order A day later, on April the 16th, 2019, Von is on Instagram Live mocking Wooski for changing after being shot in the head, saying that Wooski doesn't diss them anymore. He ain't been the same. He don't talk sh no more, nothing wrong. What the f? This man talk to me. Yeah, that is man. Man, damn me no more, nothing. I'm... His ass a. <laughs> Them bullets be changing them. Man. I hope you're watching. I hope you hear this your ass up, dude. That same day, he would tweet that he doesn't chase clout. He actually chases people with guns. And tweeting that Tuka died for your enjoyment. He would even tweet about the crimes that he was committing in Atlanta, saying that he's been doing damage on the Chicago streets since he was young, and now he's ready to cause problems elsewhere. Hashtag steppers. A sentiment that apparently Lil Durk was in full support of. Dirk was giving Von nothing but support during this period. He would make a cameo in the video for Von's track Cousins with Just Blow 600, another outrageously gangster anthem where King Von raps that if his ops aren't outside, then he will find and kill their cousins instead. This is an unbelievable thing to rap considering King Von's history of killing people and their cousins. But the track would have some more seemingly incriminating lyrics, like Just Blow 600 rapping that him and Von are popping pills, riding in the Jeep Trackhawk looking for ops, and killing people after fights. Yeah, as y'all see, I started this shit in the daytime, and now it's nighttime. It's a long video. Von would rap. His gang's body count is 24, and he'd rap that he kills women and men and can't tell the difference. And Von would even promote the video for Cousins with a hilarious tweet, telling fans that if their cousin is cool with their ops, to go to their auntie's house right now and kill them. King Von's first tweet after posting that song was warning his ops what he would do to them if he catches them without the police around. A day after that, Von posts a picture of himself eating cereal and tweeting about having killers that want him dead and killers that look up to him. Von was also feeling generous around this time, tweeting that he had given his mother a Bought my mama Gucci purse, gave her 10 racks, told her, you ain't got to stress it. Gucci purse and $10,000 cash, as well as openly tweeting that he still robs people. Von would even reply to a troll who asked why he's robbing people when he's a rich, successful rapper. And Von actually replied to this, saying he robs people because he doesn't want to spend his own money, he wants to spend somebody else's. But even if he was robbing, Von would soon have the music money rolling in even more. Von would begin teasing his collaboration with Lil Durk, Crazy Story 2.0, on April 29th. Then the day after this, on April the 30th, Von ends up having a funny interaction with a fan who replied to Lil Durk's teaser of Crazy Story 2.0, saying that she preferred it when King Von raps on his own. Von would reply to this saying, the song isn't part two, it's a version two, and that part two of Crazy Story is coming eventually, with the girl then trolling Von by pleading for him not to kill her, with Von face palming and promising not to kill the woman. I mean, to me, this interaction really drives home just how absurd it is that you've got this celebrity rapper just trying to go about his career and release music whilst it's widely known that he is a hardened killer and people are tweeting at him, begging him to not kill them too. But regardless, <laughs> things are going well for <laughs> This nigga turned the joke into some serious shit. You foul for that trap, Lawrence. I swear you foul as hell at times, bro. No disrespect to you. Keep doing what you're doing, but you a foul ass nigga at times, man. King Von and Crazy Story 2.0 with Lil Durk was due to be a hit. And it seemed like King Von could do with another hit, because he had apparently blown through $150,000 by this point, encouraging fans that they can do it too if they just work hard. Von would also tweet that people talk slick until bullets rip through them. Sadly for Von, the good times would soon come to an end. King Von would return to Chicago for a hometown concert, but this would end up being cancelled on the day, with Von suggesting that somebody was out to get him. And then, on May the 4th, 2019, footage would emerge showing a huge force of over 30 Chicago police officers raiding O-Block to arrest King Von, with Von himself being arrested in dramatic footage where he was tackled to the ground with an enraged mob of his friends accusing the cops of stealing his chain at the scene. And the cops even had to draw assault rifles on the crowd to keep them at bay whilst they arrested Von. In addition to those clips... I feel like this was fake too, y'all.
clips, the full body cam footage of King Von's arrest would later be released. Following the arrest, Von would be taken to the station where he would continue to argue with the cops. Why do they seem so friendly with Vaughn? And then he said, oh, y'all canceled the show. Like, what did he have going on with the police that nobody, like, peeped? I don't get it. So they saying they was protecting Vaughn shit from the people that supposedly been his friend. Hmm. After Vaughn's arrest, his furious mugshot would later be made public, and he would remain in jail for a significant stretch of time. Lil Durk would react to the news, tweeting free Vaughn with a sad face. But only the week after Vaughn is arrested, something unexpected happened. On May the 11th, 2019, the fourth person who was in the track hawk on the night of the shooting, Hella Bands, would be suddenly shot and killed outside of a Miami nightclub before facing any charges, with a Miami Beach spokesperson revealing that Hella Bands was also wanted in Atlanta for attempted murder and armed robbery. After Vaughn was picked up in Chicago and waiting to be sent back to Atlanta to face charges, two days later, on May the 13th, 2019, THF Bezu would also be arrested in Chicago, charged with being a fugitive from justice out of state, once again, in connection with the Atlanta shooting. For the meantime, it would only be Von and Bezu in jail, with Dirk remaining free and tweeting free Von, as well as an RIP to Hella Band. Well, we know that they said that um, Bezu was in a federal facility. He wasn't locked up with Von. Von would be transferred to Atlanta to face charges in connection with the shooting on May the 17th. And as usual, his sister ran his social media accounts, keeping fans updated with pictures of Von in jail. 
But while Von was behind bars, he didn't look like he was in jail to me. With his mentor Dirk free, his career would keep rising in his absence. Only a couple of days later, on May the 20th, 2019, Crazy Story 2.0 drops with that Lil Dirk verse. This remix of Crazy Story had King Von and Lil Dirk going back to back over the original booming Crazy Story instrumental. Crazy Story 2.0 was a huge street hit and today sits close to 100 million views on YouTube and even landed Von his first entry on the Billboard Global 200 chart. Unfortunately, the Atlanta shooting case would also catch up to Lil Dirk soon too, with Dirk tweeting at the end of May that he was turning himself in and sitting down for a TV news interview where he revealed that he was turning himself in to face these charges, and that he was also releasing a song called Turn Myself In. You're about to surrender as we speak. Yeah. How come? Because I have nothing to hide. Like, I have nothing to run from. Why he told that nigga realer than a bitch? That shit ain't great sweats huh? A rapper's ride. Soon after we spoke, Dirk Banks, a.k.a. the performer Lil Dirk, emerged from his lawyer's space and headed toward an SUV. Soon after that, he stepped out in front of the Fulton County Jail. One of his lawyers says he was swiftly taken into custody there, having swiftly flown back to Atlanta after he found out he was wanted. We found out we had a warrant. We were actually on tour. Once I heard, I immediately came back. He's willing to turn himself in and take care of what he needs to take care of. We immediately um, canceled the tour. He's got a multi-million dollar salary music career going. Did you do it? Did you shoot this man? Did you commit the other crimes of which you're accused? Um, no. Warrants involving an incident in... So who did? February on North Avenue involved charges including criminal attempt to commit murder and aggravated assault. One document indicates an Atlanta police investigator said to the best of his knowledge, Banks was employed or associated with a criminal street gang to conduct or participate in gang activity, shooting at the victim while co-defendants shot and robbed him. I had... A bad background, just growing up as a child, um, about father being uh, incarcerated for 25 years, 26 years. So I had a rough past, but like me moving to Atlanta, I just thought that it just changed my whole identity of, of thinking. After Dirk and Von were in custody, an Atlanta judge revealed that they believed that there was enough evidence to charge both Dirk and Von in the attempted murder. And Dirk and Von would be seen in an iconic televised court appearance. Today, Little Dirk. I don't know why he told. Where a judge ruled there was enough evidence for him to go to trial. The rapper and Bennett listened to the evidence against them in court. The APD says they used at least five cameras from local businesses, including this BP, as well as from the varsity across the street, in order to build their case against Little Dirk and his co-defendant. On Friday, detectives from Atlanta and Chicago testified in the criminal case against rapper Little Dirk in Fulton County Court. They say around five in the morning on February fifth, Little Dirk, whose real name is Dirk Derek Bang and his co-defendant, Devontae Bennett, were seen on camera involved in shooting Alexander Witherspoon. He said it was changed. Devontae, that's not even the um, King Von name. And I'm noticing that they kept saying that that's Bezu first name, Devontae, or Devontae, whatever the fuck how they say. That's Bezu name. I thought his name was Devon Bennett, but okay. He was snatched off his neck, and he had $30,000 stolen from him, and they stole the vehicle he was driving. We seen all that. We know that. We know that. Vaughn be on tomorrow. Dirk was back, and he would eventually open up about his time in jail after his release, with his lawyer saying definitively, he is not in a gang. Yo, know, you get in type of that uh in, in a predicament like this, you would sit back and be like, damn, like why I ain't never do this more? Why I ain't never do this with my kids more? Why I ain't do this with my pops more, my mama? You know what I'm saying? So it just sent me down so I just understand life more. A member of his legal team says slightly more than two months after he surrendered to be booked into the Fulton County Jail, Lil Dirk, a.k.a. Dirk Banks, did a book bag giveaway Sunday in conjunction with the Atlanta Entertainment Basketball League where kids can watch NBA players and others for free. Because it was the right thing to do, though she knows there will be critics. It ain't nothing new pop up because the case we've been doing it. That he did not do it because of the serious so, charges he faces after a federal... Yes, he is, because why he ain't doing it no more? He back on the top, so he killing people. So they said the beef is ended. We said, hey, ah, ah, why are you telling people that we ain't into it and all this shit? Because he want to keep killing people. He had Vaughn out there on the dummy mission. Then they turned right around and told an Asian dog was in the car. This is everything. That's how she knew exactly what to tell him. That's why she said, I can't wait till that ass get touched. I could think of a million reasons why she was saying that shit. February incident on North Avenue in which a man was wounded by gunfire, including criminal attempt to commit murder. We'll fight our case in court. And a gang charge. Lil Dirk validated himself as having a gang affiliate. And dumb fool shot to say that that wasn't the lady in the airport. 
debunk, debunk, debunk. Right? Allegedly, right. Among others. Being from South Southern Chicago, essentially you have to choose a gang for your safety. You don't choose a gang, um, you can be killed just for not being in the gang. Is he currently in a gang? Absolutely not. He moved to Atlanta to get away from the gang life, to get away from the streets. Vaughn would also be granted a $300,000 bond, being released on June the 22nd, confirmed by a tweet, of course. With Vaughn jumping on Instagram Live, fresh home from jail, and dissing his baby mama for not thinking that he would ever be getting out. I want to shout out everybody that was on my dick and thought I want coming out. I want to suck my dick. Uh, I want to shout out everybody that's talking crazy like my baby mama now. I've been through some Hey, hey, let's call me a hoe, I smack the shit out of her. Vaughn would go from jail straight onto house arrest, opening up about his situation on Instagram Live. I ain't got no good shout out. I can't hear. Damn. Part of the bail conditions were that Dirk and Vaughn could not be around each other, as King Vaughn would later reveal in a No Jumper interview. More lies. I seen it with the lady said. He couldn't be around guns. She, they can't tell you you can't. I ain't going to say they can't tell you, because I done, I done seen some cases where they didn't want the code defenders around each other. But that's not what the judge told him. Go look at the bail hearing. Yeah, so yeah, we, me and Dirk, we, ain't, we only see each other like at court, if we got court or something. But Vaughn and Dirk would still be released. Because Vaughn ain't want to be around him. Releasing music together. On July the 9th, 2019, Vaughn and Dirk released their latest collab track, Like That. And despite their legal troubles, Vaughn was still dropping lyrics hinting towards having killed K.I. and dissing Tuka. It's actually crazy to me that even whilst facing serious charges of attempted murder, both King Vaughn and Lil Dirk would continue to rap about such true criminality. Lil right. Dirk's experiment in taking the realist gangbanger from his block and turning him into a drill rapper was going too far and jeopardizing his own career. It was only years later, after Vaughn's death, that those char- Trap LaRoss, let me explain. Dirk been popping out on people before there was a King Vaughn. I done heard the stories, even with Lil Jojo. Lil Dirk popped out on him himself. But who am I? Charges against Lil Dirk for the varsity shooting were eventually dropped, with the district attorney saying that if King Von was still alive, he likely would have still been charged and facing trial for attempted murder. But in the end, whilst he was alive, King Von would face no real consequences for his involvement in this supposed shooting. In fact, Von would bail out from these charges and continue his career, not even choosing to keep a low profile either. In fact, even with the scrutiny of the police in two states, Von would go on to have one of the most successful runs in the rap game, dropping song after song of violent drill anthems, with the entire world following along I'm wondering how this multiple murderer just kept getting away with it. I hope you enjoyed that clip. Now look, y'all. This is your boy, Casa Dom. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Do you think Traveler Ross is really... Because he, he was an NBA Youngboy fan before any of this. Is. This man was a clear fan of NBA Youngboy. Why do he bash Vaughn and blame all this shit on Vaughn? Is somebody paying him to do this here? Because... He typed like an agent. He looks like an agent. He sounds like an agent. He moved like an agent. Nine times out of ten, the dude is agent. Shout out to King Rob over there and the motherfucking struggle, the, 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 the real Don TV. You know what I'm saying? Let bygones be bygones. Let me stop being childish because for me to try to disrespect that man because he felt like I was getting at him and he, he spoke his mind, it's childish. I don't know him. I don't got no problem with him. So live and let live as I feel. Y'all go over there and support his channel. He got a new channel going on called um, F the Feds. I think it's FDF. Go over there and support him, y'all. Let him know Casa. Well, you can't let him know shit. He don't do comments. But, you know, it is what it is. It's your boy Casa Don. Thank you to my moderators. Thank you to my subscribers. Thank you to everybody who rock with the channel. Man, I really appreciate y'all. I'm up out of here for now. Hope you like the video. I'm going to break it down into two because it's so long. So enjoy. Support the part one and part two. It's your boy Costa Donald. I'm out of here. Peace.